what if creators were completely unfiltered about how they make money, how they strategize to grow their audience, how they negotiate with brands and more? Well, thanks to Creators on Creators, now they are. I'm not as organized as people might think I am. As a small creator, as someone that's- You're small, what am <laughs> I? Oh my goodness. Read the contract. Don't just think because she said four weeks organic on email, there isn't some hidden charges in the T's and C's. When I was actually ready to quit the entire campaign awesome. and they were paying really highly. We love the content you, you post, like it would go so well with our cleaning product. I'm like, and you're like, I've never cleaned in a video in my life. Do you ever find yourself sometimes paying to work with a brand? Huh? In terms of... Huh? Can I have both? Is that too much to No, ask? you can't, honey. You, we wish, <laughs> honestly. If only. Honest to God, if only. We'll pay you an exposure. That's the thing. Um, I'm so triggered right now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm so triggered. It's like therapy. I'm so triggered. Yeah. What would you do if a brand had like a really tight brief mm. of what they wanted and you were not, not super aligned with that, but you liked the brand? Well, I just had that just now. <laughs> Ah, I'm happy for you. Thank you very much. That's such a dope color. That's the dopest one I think I've heard of ever. But many like black or brown women that do it, and then a lot of brands like whitewash mm -hmm. the people that send the content. Like, I feel like we're now in the hot seat. Yes. <laughs> Quick fire, they said. Real fire. Ooh. What is your highest paid deal? I'm one of the executive producers on this series. Let me tell you a bit about it and how we pulled it off. If you're new here, hi, I'm Tati Kapaya. I'm a lifestyle and travel content creator. To be honest, I make videos about absolutely everything, but this new podcast series is easily one of the most exciting projects I've ever worked on. So firstly, what is creators on creators? Think actors on actors, but with creators. So super unfiltered conversations, talking about money, strategy, brand deals, everything, but with some of your favorite creators. I would consider myself a full-time creator. I do a bunch of other things as well, but I would always wonder behind the scenes, how are other creators doing this? And I was having conversations with other creators who are my friends, and we were always like, what are we actually doing here? How much are you getting paid for this deal? How much should I be charging for this? What is usage? What is whitelisting? What are all these things? So there definitely just needed to be something for us creators to learn from each other and help other people. I think we need to stick together. We need to form a community. And that's exactly what Creators on Creators is aiming to do. I can only speak from my experience of being a black female creator, but when it comes to being a minority in any industry, it does sometimes feel like you're very outcast and it's hard to access that knowledge. Accessibility was a huge motivator in creating this series. So that's a brief rundown as to what it is and why it is. Let's now go into how this all came to be and how it's going. So I came up with the idea in December 2022 and I told my friend Becky, I was like, oh, I really feel like there needs to be something like actors on actors, but for creators. And she was like, this is such a great idea. We need to we need to do this. Let's do it together. I was like, absolutely. Then we kind of let it sit. We let it simmer because we knew it would be a huge undertaking. Cut to February 2023. We go to Copenhagen, Becky and I. We're sitting at dinner one night. And one thing about us, we cannot not talk about business like we're very much entrepreneurs one conversation will lead to a business venture so we were like we have to do this we we must get the ball rolling i even have a voice note of of when we first started thinking about it hold on okay so it's creators on creators and um, first episode would be me and becky um and then further episodes could be literally any creator talking to any creator yes give them prompts if we're not able to be there we'll do it and do it internationally. Um, yeah, that's basically the general gist. So just when making the presentation, think of when, where, why, who. So that's when we decided we need to put the work in. We also decided we wanted to do this properly. We didn't want to just put this together for the vibes. We really wanted to take this seriously. So we started by making a treatment slash pitch deck. And I did my first degree in television and broadcasting. So creating treatments, concepts, pre-production documents and stuff is very second nature to me but my goodness was this a job and a half because not only do you have to explain what it is why you're creating it who's going to be on it you have to think about things like where is it going to live what audience is it going to reach why should people actually be invested in it and you can believe in an idea so much but getting other people to agree and believe in it that's the hardest part so we started having meetings we met with so many people to get feedback for one and to see if they wanted to be on board from the jump now this is where we ran into some problems <laughs> i genuinely at this point cannot say anything for reasons i cannot 
mention, but we quickly learned that we had to trademark and copyright our idea. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> we knew we wanted to produce this in England, but then we were also toying with the idea of why don't we do some stuff in Kenya? Because we're both Kenyan. I'm half Kenyan. So we were like, let's do some stuff in Kenya. Let's also do some stuff in America. Why not? Let's take this global. But taking something global means getting legal protection globally, right? The trademarking and copywriting process in the UK, so easy. I don't know why it costs £12 in 10 minutes to set up a full company. It's so easy in the UK to do any legal stuff, right? Right? The USA, completely different story. You have to have an attorney, you have to pay government fees. Not an easy process whatsoever. The same in Kenya, you can't just have one copyright in one country and assume that's going to cover you everywhere you go. And the process of copywriting and trademarking intellectual property is very, very difficult because how do you copyright an idea? How do you copyright a video? Do you know, it's very up in the air. So you usually focus on things like the logo, the color, the font, the name, obviously, but you can't necessarily copyright an idea. But when something is so heavily in the public domain, it's a lot easier. Our issue was it wasn't yet. This is all before anything had launched. But the challenges we faced so early on only proved to us that we had such an incredible idea that we had to run with and we had to see through. So that's exactly what we decided to do. So now the challenge came of how do we make this first pilot season incredibly worthwhile? We need excellent creators. The challenge with this is the format. The format heavily, heavily relies on other creators willing to take part. How do we get creators to take part in a series that has no digital footprint, no proof of success? We have to use our connections. So luckily being in the content creator space, we have content creator friends. So that's exactly what we did. We used our network and got creators from the US, the UK and Kenya to build the first season. 12 creators, six episodes. If you haven't seen Actors on Actors, they get two actors, put them in a room and they have very deep conversations about acting. We wanted it to be a bit more regimented and a bit more organized just to make sure that the audience and the creators in the episode were getting the most out of the conversation. So we made different segments. So we have the creator and the strategy. We've got the creator and the inspiration. We have money talks and more. So we really thought everything through. And in terms of the actual guest outreach, again, because nothing was in the public domain, we had every guest sign an NDA. And that was probably the weirdest thing for me because asking your friends to sign a non-disclosure agreement is so wild. But you do have to remember to separate business and friendship and everyone understood that. They were like, oh, absolutely, we'll sign an NDA. This isn't even an issue. But in terms of actually reaching out to these creators, we basically sent everyone an email. We probably reached out to maybe around 25 creators in total and we had 12 agree. And then luckily enough, we had a solid database of people who wanted to come on the show. Obviously some challenges come with this. There are some people who we really wanted who just either said no or didn't get back to us. And then there are some people who pulled out last minute just because of like scheduling reasons. And that's very much expected. It's nothing you can get hung up on. I remember when we were filming the London one, it was maybe two days before and we had to completely flip things around. But anyway, then it was time to find a location for both London and Nairobi because these were the two locations we were filming in. Nairobi was fine. We just booked an Airbnb and that was all great. London proved to be more of a challenge because whilst there are podcast studios in London, they are not very pretty in general. They didn't match the aesthetic we wanted. Whilst we did find a location in the end, it wasn't suitable for recording a podcast. That is probably my main regret when it comes to the production of season one. The location for London just wasn't it. It was loud, there was no soundproofing. It just wasn't built for it. It looked pretty, but that's not good enough when you're making a podcast. It needs to sound excellent which it didn't. So our main learning lesson there is definitely visit locations in advance. And the annoying thing is, is we did visit a few. We just didn't visit the one we went with. Don't even ask why. Now we know, and I definitely won't be making that mistake again. There's too much riding on that location and that space, because when you've got a bad location, bad audio, the whole production falls apart. Luckily, in terms of the way we split the episodes, only two of the episodes were filmed in London. It didn't completely throw off the first season. And obviously speaking of locations and productions, you need a production crew. So we obviously worked with a production crew in Nairobi and then a different production crew in London. We had briefing calls with a bunch of different people to gather rates and also just to give a general overview into the season so that they were on board. We also did have to send NDAs for this as well. All in all, my main takeaways from this are definitely work with people who 
a podcast first, if you're producing a podcast, from a post-production standpoint, there are some things I would definitely change about the actual production moving forward for season two. We also didn't shoot this raw, which I think would help so much in season two when it comes to color grading and just the aesthetic of the podcast. I know we are talking about a podcast which is audio first, but I'm a very visual podcast listener slash watcher. And the visuals for me are absolutely everything. I love watching a nice looking podcast. So I definitely want to make so many changes when it comes to season two production. But all in all, I think it was a great start. There are some production companies that I really wanted to work with that we didn't get to just because of budgets. I think the best thing when producing anything is just starting, failing quickly and figuring out those changes as soon as possible. So just continuously experimenting. So I definitely wouldn't change anything from what we did, but I would definitely change things moving forward, if that makes sense. So fast forward to early 2024, everything is done recording. So this whole process from conception to finishing recording was a year. And I know you're wondering why the hell did it take you a year? Because we had early meetings in literally like February, 2023. And honestly, it was just the legal side of things. It was just getting that initial groundwork in place and developing the concept and redeveloping and redeveloping upon many, many rounds of feedback. So the pre-production and the conception of an idea is so, so, so important. So we really just wanted to take our time with it. And we were forced to take our time with it, again, because of the things like trademarking and copywriting and all of that stuff that I can't get into yet, but I will hopefully get into in the future. <laughs> So if you don't know, I did digital marketing as my second degree, my master's. This is where the budget goes. Like I knew that if we want to market this properly, we are going to need to spend money. We wanted to have screenings and we wanted to send PR boxes and we wanted to, you know, have photo shoots and do all of this stuff. And that costs money. One of the things we compromised on was doing billboards and physical advertising, but you can create some great mock-ups using AI. So that's the route we took with that. But in terms of getting PR boxes and doing a screening, that was probably one of the most exciting but challenging things because we really wanted to get some brand partners to partner with us on these boxes. And we managed to, we were so, so, so lucky and great to be able to work with some incredible brands for both London and Nairobi. They were so gracious in giving us products to put in PR boxes, things to have at the screening, like for example, Propicorn, they gave us so, so, so many bags of popcorn to have at our screening, to have in PR boxes. Same with Ember, they have heat control temperature mugs. It's the same with Corsten Press, they sent over so many cans of their drinks. So we worked with some incredible brands and the process of pitching to these brands was a whole different beast. So we had a whole partnerships deck. So you're obviously doing a similar thing where you're convincing them why. Why do they need to have their brand be attached to creators on creators? So in the pitch deck, we highlight things like the season one guests have a combined audience of 1.45 million followers. So think about the reach the podcast is going to get just from the jump. Things like why we're creating the podcast, the ways in which they can get involved and how it's going to be for them. Obviously, you want to highlight what you want to achieve out of the partnership, but you also want to highlight what they're going to get. And if a brand is looking for that extra brand awareness, perfect. It depends on the brand's KPIs at the end of the day, their key performance indicators. And again, this was extremely special because there was no proof of success. There was nothing Nothing out there in the world that proved to these brands that this is going to succeed but they still believed in the vision which was absolutely incredible in terms of socials we had to create a short and long-term strategy so we started posting on our socials a month before the actual launch just building some anticipation building some excitement and one thing to note with the strategy is that we really wanted to emphasize the fact that we wanted to be adaptable we want to continue again failing fast learning adapting changing with the times. We don't want to be slaves to a content calendar, you know? And then it was time to have our screening and preparing for a screening as well. Location scouting is the first thing. We went with Curzon Cinemas in London and the Unseen Cinema in Nairobi. It was so great to be able to meet with some of the Creators on Creators community. Again, people who are believing in the vision from day one, before they've seen absolutely anything. We had to put together a guest list. We wanted to keep it exclusive. So it was invite only with some plus ones and friends and family, but we were really focusing on the creators who were on the episodes, the creators who we would potentially want to be in future seasons, any industry partners that we want to work with and anyone else in the industry. For example, talent managers and agency owners. And obviously we're screening a podcast. How do we make this engaging? We decided let's make a supercut 
of every single episode in the series and make like a 40 minute video that we can show at the screening. And this was my job, eight hours of footage, three cameras, two audio tracks, such a challenge, but so, so, so rewarding because watching it come together and watching people's reactions to the screening was so special. I feel like I should show you some of it. Game, it's time for a game. Do you want to go first or should I go first? Let me, let me read yours first. Oh gosh. Yes. Talk us through your creative process from concept to execution on this brief. Your aim is to encourage people to book a journey using our ride sharing service through a 30 second to one minute video. Yeah, so deliverables is one video 60 days boosting access on Instagram and one story sets two to three frames. So the concept would be I'm running late for an event and actually taking the idea of a get ready with me. Mm. The conflict would now be that I'm running late mm. and I've got like five minutes to get ready. I don't have a ride. I'm in a different city mm -hmm. um, and I'm talking to the camera being like, oh, and I'm going to this event. This is my outfit. Mm -hmm. um, oh my goodness, like the time's running out. How mm. am I gonna get here? It's my first time in the city. Mm. And I get out my phone, I'm like, oh, book it comes and I continue just getting ready mm. I'm like ah, I've even got five more minutes left to spare I took inspiration from that conflict thing you said yeah see this is why these conversations are important <laughs> for the reel and tiktok together I do 2500 and then with the story set 800 together so in total maybe around like 3,000 pounds let's make it a flat a flat rate of 200 after tax oh okay yes yeah. nice. but because it's a luxury it'd probably be higher yeah but then there are other costs for example production am i the one shooting or is my videographer shooting it okay yeah, yeah. So 1,800 dollars to 2,000 dollars 1.3 for the reel and then for story sets yeah probably like 300 and then usage on top probably like another 500 or so That'd be 300 plus the 1,000 plus the 1,500. It'll be 2,528. Yeah. I feel like your rate should be higher though. For that concept? Yeah. Your audience is still of mm. value. So you still need to factor your audience in, not just the effort you're putting into the video. Quite smartly put. Probably 3,000. With the ad usage as well. Ooh, we're looking at five to seven. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> 2K for the real. Uh... 400 to 600 for the spread deck. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. That's good. 6. But it's their usage. I would give, I would charge like 30% of what the video costs mm -hmm. um, for the boosting. I don't know how it is in LA, but like here, like UGC boosting, etc., is really like overlooked. Like I had a conversation with brands where I'm like, this is my fee. And because you've asked for this, it's extra. And they were like, no, because you're making the video for us. So we should be able to use it. I'm like, that's not how it works. Yeah. If you want to make a video, go make a video, make a concept. But if you want me to be in your video and you want the same skill that I put on my page on yours, then there's a fee attached to that. And cut to now, we're about halfway through the season by the time you're watching this. My episode just went out, so definitely go check that out. Me and Raymond were talking for like two hours. It's such a fun episode to watch. All of that for a six week run. And now we start pre-production for season two. I'm just so excited to build a community of creators and aspiring creators where we can just learn from each other. We can interact, we can meet up, we can do so many things together and feel like we actually have a community. So if you haven't already, definitely go check out Creators on Creators, join the Conk community. I think it was like one episode had gone out and there were already over a thousand people on Instagram following. It's just wild to see the speed at which this is growing and the community we're starting to build i'm so 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 grateful and i speak a lot about being busy all the time so it was nice to kind of bring you behind the scenes and show you one of the things that i spend a lot of my time doing um and that is being an executive producer now so yeah thank you so much for watching all my social media links will be in the description below so feel free to follow me over there definitely go follow creators on creators for more i'm gonna go now i'll see you next time so bye wow.